Welcome to Mecham's Gone Farm and Vintage Tractor Auction, featuring the only classic tractor auction of its kind in the country. Today, some of the hardest to find tractors in the world will hit the auction block. So sit back and relax and enjoy Mecham's Gone Farm and Vintage Tractor Auction. Hello and welcome to Walworth, Wisconsin to the 2013 Mecham's Gone Farm and Vintage Tractor Auction. My name is Patrick Holmes and along with Max Wilson, we are going to bring you hundreds of vintage tractors, antiques and collectibles over the next three days here from Walworth, Wisconsin. So don't go anywhere. All the excitement begins right after this. Do you have a classic tractor or collection you'd like featured on our weekly show? Well, time is running out for Mecham's Gone Farman Vintage Classic Tractor Auction, coming up November 1st and 2nd in Davenport, Iowa. It all happens at the Mississippi Valley Fairgrounds, where we'll feature hundreds of the best vintage tractors anywhere. Just call or log on to Mecham.com to find out all the entry details. And we'll see you November 1st and 2nd in Davenport, Iowa. Welcome back. We're live at Mecham's World Headquarters here in Walworth, Wisconsin for the fourth annual Mecham's Gone Farming Antique and Vintage Tractor Auction. And uh, Max, what an exciting day. This is the third and final day, and we have got tons of tractors, including the Mike White Collection coming up this morning. Yeah, and the Mike White Collection is 30 international tractors, all very nicely restored. There's a cut, little bit of everything there. He's got some other colors besides the red, but... But Looking mostly red. Yep. I have a lot of the folks that are here today have asked me, when's the Mike White collection going? Because that seems to be one of the gems for today's auction. Mm -hmm. right, yeah, this guy here has uh, brought 12, us some of the nicest restored John Deere Bs. I believe this is the first styled one that he's brought us. I mean, paint is so deep that it looks like he could fall into it. Just he gets the shine, the castings are all smoothed out and everything. Um, he just goes above and beyond when he does the paint. I mean, this is a complete teardown in paint, DuPont urethane paint, all original sheet metal, all fluids changed, new axle bearings. And tires are brand new. Now this one, I remember yesterday we talked about those fan blades being painted by hand yellow, but that must have been prior to 1944. Um, actually, yeah, it must have been right around 43, 44. I was probably off a little bit on my year when I mentioned it. I think that's about what you said, though. I'm going to have to go back and listen, but before that you said because for safety reasons they painted that plan for this one's green. This one now just soared past $20,000. The reserve has been met. $22,000 really speaks to the quality of restoration on that thing. And that has been sold for $22,000. Now, that gentleman right there has been here the last couple of days, and maybe that was the tractor he's waiting for, but uh, could have been. He, he, made a, he, he paid up, but boy, did he get a gem. S25 is rolling in now. This is a 58 model John Deere 720. Uh, this is a diesel, wide front, beautifully restored. Um, some of these guys are going to the point where the, they're power washing the tires and dressing them to make them look new. These tires look good, uh, but still have some field dirt on them. Yeah, yeah, and... Uh, and, you know, a lot of it up here at presentation is everything, but a, tra a good running tractor will speak for itself, paint-wise and everything else. Good. And this, uh, one's getting this tractor sold. here get five get five. is, uh, yeah, yeah. this one's three. also at a no reserve, four. so four. it's, it's going to sell for what it brings. Now. A couple of these have said black dash, and, and, and I noticed they do have a black dash, which a lot of them don't. What was the distinguishing uh, fact about the black dash? Um, 57 in the 58, 58 models, what it was. Is there was a six, uh, demand for more horsepower. Seven, the engineering had come up with a few things that they could change on them to get that horsepower rating up. So a black dash, that just meant they had to hire engine ratings and everything. And they painted the dash as black. So it's just a styling change. So not all 57s and 58s, just certain ones that had the higher horsepower. It was 58s were black dashes, 57, or mid 57s when they changed that. So that sold for 57 50 no Six thousand dollars to you. Six thousand dollars. Fifty-seven and a half here. You better get six thousand dollars here. You better get six. That's not a bad price considering we had one come through earlier. Sold on the fifty-seven hundred. Maybe he should have blackened the tires on that one. <laughs> the restoration job on that looks looks fantastic. Next several vehicles, by the way, are going to be sold at no reserve. Um, S26. This looks like another John Deere 720. Wide front end, power steering. Uh, painted just this year. Uh, lights all work. 
Anybody get four? At four thousand. Anybody get three? Anybody get four? Anybody get four? Anybody get three? Anybody get four thousand? At three thousand dollars. Anybody get four thousand? Anybody get four thousand? Anybody get three? Anybody get four? At four thousand dollars. That tractor set the fuel economy record. Thirty-two. Stood for over twenty years. Thirty-two hundred dollar bit. Thirty-seven. Those things when they're running on diesel. Thirty-five they, hundred. They thirty-seven. Roll it. I mean, at thirty-five. Anybody get thirty-seven now? Four. You fill that up. Four thousand two. Forty-two. Anybody get two? Anybody get two? Anybody get two? Four is the bid. At four thousand dollars right now. Forty-five. No reserve. Forty-two. Anybody get forty-five? Another really nice condition tractor. One that can be used and collected and paraded. There's a lot of uses. It's been pretty affordable on this one. Forty-five hundred dollars. Anybody get forty-seven hundred dollars? Anybody get forty-five? Anybody get forty-seven? Wrapping it up. So $4, sold it for forty five hundred dollars. Another one sold in the record books, in the sold books. So now we have a S27. Now, this is an example of one of these tractors, again, a 720 diesel, uh, that has not been to the restoration shop. This one, as you would say, Max, still has its work clothes on. Yep, still has its work clothes on. Looks like it's not running. It has an aftermarket-wide front on it. Um, no muffler. It's, it, it, it'd be a good one for me to buy and take home and monkey with and get running. But I'm starting to figure out that the money is better to buy one that someone else has already got or you couldn't do this one. It'll be interesting to see what this brings versus, you know, the one right before this in fantastic condition about 4,500. Uh, this one at no reserve right now is at 1,500. Kind of a before and after. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the muffler just gone on this unit, right? This wasn't taken off for any uh, production purposes. No, no. It, you can actually see where the muffler was on there. It was steamed right at the back of the grill where the water is rusted and washed off of it. Uh, Someone that no reserve. Uh, body's in good condition, this tractor. And, uh, obviously, you don't know what's wrong mechanically. Um, looks like she's got some rust in there. Might not have been running for a while. Yeah, I had looked at this tractor a couple different times, and it was just one of those where there's too many unknowns. Yeah, was, the, uh, was, the was the motor seized, or do you remember? I didn't even try it because I saw a few other things. That, um, didn't really scare me, but it's just I knew I was going to be sticking some money. In roll it down, get it well, it looks like it's selling now. They dropped down to a thousand dollars, so uh, a thousand, eleven, twelve hundred dollars. Would this possibly be a tractor somebody would buy for parts, Max? Yeah, most likely that's probably what someone's looking at for. Is they're going to knock it in the head. There's the sheet metal on that thing, if you needed it, or the wheels. I mean, there's obviously a lot of very, very useful parts on that. It looks like it's going to sell around fourteen hundred. Dollars. Logan. Sold fourteen hundred Logan. fourteen hundred dollars. That's S one twenty seven. Next thing in the ring is uh, is a John Deere eight twenty diesel, same year, nineteen fifty seven. Uh, really nice restoration on this tractor. Yeah, and, uh, this is actually what I've got at home is a nineteen fifty seven eight twenty. Um, don't look near as nice as this. Uh, but I uh, love the grill on these these tractors. It's and really, neat. it's my big workhorse at home. I, I, when I bought it, I'm like, nah, I don't know if I'm gonna like this. Uh, once I got out and I got pollen with it, you feel like a king. So, so do you use this tractor more than, than most of your others? Yeah, yeah, yeah this does so most of our tillage work and everything. Uh, pull 416s with it in second gear. And I got a 14 foot disc I work ground with it. And is this pretty much the twin to your tractor? Yeah, it's a 1957. Mine's got the dual hydraulics on it, as does this one. Pony Star. Uh, it looked like a full restoration. Of course, the, the engine and the seats and some of those things are original, but it's had full body paint, it looks like, last year. All the lights work. Right now it's at $5,300. And I would actually like to have mine look like that. <laughs> well, here's your chance if you want to run out there real quick, because we're just about up against a hard break, but it's at $5,700, $5,800. People are starting to bid now as it rolls out of the arena. You can hear in our background, you can hear the, the auctioneer working the last few bidders to try to get every dollar they can. I believe this one's selling uh, at no reserve as well. So somebody's going to be an owner. Now we just eclipsed $6,000 on this tractor. Lots and lots of bidders out there still. And a lot of tractors to come. So uh, and a lot of really interesting stuff. So we hope you can stick around. And uh, we're just about ready to say sold on S128. He's putting it in gear and it sold for $6,000. So Max Wilson to Patrick Holmes. We are here uh, at Meekham's Gone Farm and Vintage Tractor Auction. Don't go anywhere. A lot more to come. Yes, sir.
Do you have a classic tractor or collection you'd like featured on our weekly show? Well, time is running out for Mecham's Gone Farming Vintage Classic Tractor Auction, coming up November 1st and 2nd in Davenport, Iowa. It all happens at the Mississippi Valley Fairgrounds, where we'll feature hundreds of the best vintage tractors anywhere. Just call or log on to Mecham.com to find out all the entry details. And we'll see you November 1st and 2nd in Davenport, Iowa. Hi, I'm here with commentator and tractor guru, Max Wilson. Can you tell me a little bit about what it's like to be up there doing this? Oh, well, it's been about a year now I've been doing this for Dan and for Mecham Auctions, and it's just been a real treat and an experience. It's a little nerve-wracking at first, but now I'm starting to get the hang of it, and it doesn't bother me near as much. So. Excellent, excellent. What is it like working with Dan and his team? Oh, uh, it's a lot of fun. I actually grew up with Dan. He grew up a mile down the road from me, so we've known each other for years, and it's just been fun. It's kind of like a family reunion working with them. I mean, every auction we get back to it, and it's the same group of guys, and we just have a lot of fun. So. Okay, so was your love stemming from the tractors or from being on camera? What kind of drew you to doing this? Um, it was mainly the tractors. Um, Dan knows I've been around them for years, ever since I was just a little guy, so... And I've got a background, me and my dad farm with antique tractors yet, so it's just one of those things I kind of fell into. So so how did you come to know so much about tractors to get the title of Tractor Guru? Uh, just growing up, uh, reading books and everything. I mean, a lot of kids were into playing sports and everything. I was reading tractor magazines and books and just being around them all my life. And just I, I, They intrigued me a lot. So it's just the fun experience to actually be able to go through and now do this as a commentator for Mecham and RFD TV. It's just been a lot of fun. It sounds like a perfect fit. Thank you and have a lot of fun out yep, there. Thank you. Welcome back to Walworth, Wisconsin. Patrick Holmes and Max Wilson uh, at the Gone Farman Vintage Tractor Auction. And neat little tractor in the ring right now. And here is another, you know, what I'd call probably a showstopper. This, uh, this is a 1925 John Deere, again, another Spoker D in fantastic condition. Uh, it's, it's got the, uh, the pads on the wheels to allow you to do some driving in parades, but another one that's fantastically restored. Yeah, this is a really nice tractor. Uh, again, with a great uh, the air cleaner, mag, carb, everything I believe is correct on this tractor. Um, this would be a 24-inch flywheel on this. Um, you look at the wheels and the, the way the spokes are laid out, they're flat spokes, and it's the early version, so everything's correct on this tractor. Um, of course, it would be $10,000 right now. Bid. Of course, the John Deere D was started in 23, and they built them all the way to 53 with a few variations in there. Um, um, real neat ones in early pre-production. The first production run of them had a fabricated uh, angle iron front axle on them. So they were riveted together and they found out with the weight of the tractor. And the that that couldn't, you, that couldn't uh, stand up. No, they didn't hold up. Um, this looks pretty heavy duty. It looks like they learned their lesson on these. Mm -hmm. they, they figured out to make them with the heavy cast and iron and everything. And they really held up after that. But believe it or not, there are a few. There is, I think, one or two of them out there known to exist that still have the fabric. This one seems to be running great. It's at $14,000. Not sure if the reserve has been met, but they're starting to roll it out of the arena. So we'll see if the bidding jumps up or if the uh, seller decides to sell or jump down a couple thousand in just a, a second or two. We're up to $16,000 on this tractor. Uh, you know, based on what the earlier ones were bringing, uh, still a pretty good buy. Now it's at 19. Uh, a lot of activity on the, on the tractor right now. We're at $20,000. Yeah, I think a lot of it was all of a sudden the tractor rolled by and some people seeing how nice and straight those fenders and everything, which a lot of them anymore, I, you're not seeing the original tin work on the fenders and stuff You look at the hood on that thing and uh, how, how shiny it is. So the bid goes on at 20000 on that 25 John Deere Spoker D, uh, which brings us to number S134. This is 1954 John Deere 60. Uh, good condition. Uh, looks like they didn't mask off the tires quite as much when they did some shooting on them with the paint, but uh, again, a pretty nice looking tractor. Yeah, and of course, we've got, me and my dad have 360s at home, so uh, I've got a lot of hours sitting on one of these, so it was uh, me and dad's big workhorse on the farm up until we got the uh, 820. Yeah, um, but still getting used, I take it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, dad still uses that to plant corn. We use it uh, combine and beans. We've got a full type number 30 combine. Of course, now the 60s replaced the uh, John Deere A in 1953. 
35. Okay, Kathy, so get a bit of a five. Get a bit of a 35. What do you mean? No. And now five. Get a bit of three. Uh, five. And if you get a bit of a team player, get a bit of a five. Here, three. And 35. Uh, power steering. And if you get a bit of a three thousand man, 35. And a man. And if you get a bit of a 35. And get a bit of a three here. Front row, right. 35. And if you get a bit of a three. And get a bit of a six. And then 35. And if you get a bit of a five. And get a bit of a three. And get a bit of a five. And get a bit of a six. Pretty good price point this at this juncture. Yeah. Three thousand dollars. Would you call that bargain land on this one? Yeah. It, it's still down in that range where it's uh, it's affordable. Uh, the 60s, they, they just don't seem to uh, get the appreciation that like a 70 or a 50 does. It, it, they kind of get forgotten about there. I think it's because there's so many of them out there. Yeah, I was going to say, they don't get forgotten on your farm. Well, you got three of them. So we're at $3,200. Can't see uh, if that's got power steering. That'd be kind of interesting. I don't think it does because there would be a decal down at the okay. bottom below the 60 that would say power steering. So. Well, that's starting to roll out. Not sure uh, if the reserve has been met at $3,200. We're wrapping up the bidding on this one, and it is sold. Reserve's been met, $3,200. And uh, in comes another 8 and 4. This is number uh, S135. Uh, sounds to be uh, the original owner. Uh, Great-looking little tractor. Uh, pretty much original. Looks like it might have had some, some steelwork paint but uh, uh, on, the, on the hood. But other than that, looks pretty original. Yeah, it, it looks to be a real honest tractor as far as and of course when it's a one owner pretty much you, you got to go with what that one owner's told you he knows the life of that tractor and I don't know um, what the actual year is on this. I believe the N series was built from like 38 to 53, I think, on the Ford. The 8 Ns, anyway, I think it was 39 or 40 was when they came out. So. Um, looks like original rear tires on it. I always like that with the Ford right on the top of the hood, the Ford signature. And then you go through and you stencil that out with the red paint. It just makes it pop. It really makes a nice looking. Uh, Tractor. Very distinguished tractor. You can always tell one of those a mile away. It's great, got great lines, and again, it's got that bulletproof motor in it. That's a, that's a great tractor. Somebody can get a lot of years of enjoyment out of that tractor. Right now, it's at two thousand um, dollars. I'm not sure if the reserve has hit, been hit on that. We'll start in, each, uh, inching it out of the, the arena now, and we'll see uh, we'll see if the bidding cranks up or if, uh, if they let that one go. It's about two thousand dollars right now. And of course the Ford 8 ends. I mean that's just they they were all over. I mean yeah. every farm I think had one at one point. They're just a handy tractor to have around too. And reliable and, uh, you know, and now pretty popular. It's at nineteen hundred and fifty dollars. And it does not look like uh, oh the bid goes on. So uh, the bid goes on at nineteen fifty on the uh, on the eight N. Uh, wow, another one of these spoke wheel tractors. This is an S uh, S136. This is a 34 John Deere A. Uh, fully restored. Just a, just a really classic John Deere tractor. Yeah, and with the serial number on this one, Patrick, um, the serial number on these started at 410,000, so this is within the first 2,000 Model A's built. Open fan shaft, which if you look in the, right on the back of that upper water pipe behind the exhaust manifold, Back to the governor case by the Magneto. That shaft is in the open. You can see it turning. That runs your fan. And uh, very desirable tractor to own. Um, they also, the 34s, no oil pressure gauge. All they had was what they called a redhead indicator, which was a little rod that came up. Is that right? When your oil pressure was there. And the tip of it was painted red. So when that started creeping down, if you it came down and it was touching the red, you better be shutting it off because you're losing your oil pressure. And uh, you've got the nice round spoke yep. wheels front and back on this one. And that, that's another big selling point on these things. I mean, to buy a set of used uh, uh, set of round spokes that are original, it's eighteen hundred dollars. So. Wow, bid goes on at eight thousand on that one. S thirty one thirty sevens in the ring in nineteen forty five John Deere AW. Yeah, and uh, of course, in the A's and B's, the wide front tractors. By this point, they were starting to be a little more popular, but at that point, everyone wanted to narrow front because they were using them for row crop work. Um, of course, they turned shorter with the with the narrow front. Um, this has got that little anteater that you talked about front end on this one. Yeah, and this thing here, I didn't see any welds or cracks in this when I was looking at it. Um, it has official documents from the two-cylinder. 
uh, club, power troll, long hood, cast rear wheels. And of course, when I say long hood, it's the electric start that they put in is kind of carry them over until they came out with the press steel frame tractors in uh, 40, late 47. Um, one of those wartime tractors where just at the end of the war, these, this is just as they were starting to ramp production back up coming out of World War II. Um, just neat tractors to be around. They, they've got their own unique sound at this time. When they got into the later ones, they had a little bit throatier sound. These have a little more of a pop to them. Yeah. Uh, this one's at, uh, at $5,000 right now. Great tires on this one as well. So, again, uh, kind of a unique tractor, a good one for parades or the or the novice collector. Or, uh, and it's starting to roll out at 5000 now, so it will be interesting to see if the seller's going to part with it. And the bid goes on at $5,000. Uh, coming in now is a 1959 Massey Ferguson 95 Super. Wow, this is, uh, again, you talked earlier, Max, about Massey when they uh, you know, when they do the design and they did the paint scheme. This is another one of those that you just can't help but, but stop and look at and, and mm -hmm. really uh, acknowledge the details and the design on these Masseys. Yeah, the, I mean, you look at this tractor, it looks... It looks like someone hooked it between two other tractors and just stretched, stretched it, out. it out. Yeah. And of course, in 1959, this was competing against the 820s and the 830 John Deere's, um, the W or the 560s and the 660 Internationals. Uh, beautiful restoration on this tractor. And if you look at it, you got three separate engine blocks and cylinder heads. Technically, what this was was a Minneapolis Moline design that Massey Ferguson put there tin work on. They needed a big tractor and they were buying uh, engines and transmissions from Minneapolis Moline and then putting their, their own, tin work on it. Yep, their own look on it. Well, and this is a at $4,000, that is a steal for that tractor right now. I mean, that, everything's done on it. It runs nice. Beautiful looking tractor. That one is, and it's unique. Uh, mm -hmm. it, and it looks like the bid goes on at $4,000. So, uh, and here's another one that I got a kind of a kick out of. I have never seen one of these before. This is a 52 Ford 8N on it's got the track system on it. Tell us, tell us, do you know uh, the details on that? That was an actual uh, Ford or Dearborn design, which, of course, Dearborn, Michigan, just down the road from Detroit, where Ford was uh, uh, hanging out at at that point. Being a 52, it's towards the end of production. This was an actual setup that they had to help you out in the mucky or the heavier soils to kind of keep you up on top of it. Um, but obviously that's removable if you want to take it off. Yep. Yeah, and it's just a matter of an arm and slipping that rubber belting is really all it is. Rubber belting with some steel pads that run from the belting. So that's really kind of similar to a set of chains. Instead of chains, they just put on that other wheel and put on a track system. But it kind of it stretched you out so you had a lot more ground contact and it kept track tractor afloat and it heavier. So that front wheel is really for just stability. It's not doing anything. All the work's being done by the rear wheel. Right. And that's just kind of dragging that track along. Um, this tractor's still a 6-volt, has a new carb, factory tachometer, which I would think is kind of a different deal on the, uh, on the Ford 8N because, I mean, that was kind of ahead of its time to have a tachometer on a tractor. Well, and, and you know, this is bringing uh, you know, quite a bit more than a lot of the 8Ns that we've seen with that, uh, with some of the unique features of this, of course, the track system being one of them. Yeah, with that track system, it also has the pre-cleaner with the little glass jar hanging off the side of it. None of the rest of them that have come through so far today or yesterday have had that That's on true. there. So. And, of course, this one being later in production has the Ford in the fender, too. Yeah, so. We didn't see that on, on, on the ones yesterday either and this one's all nicely restored and that's painted like they do on the front. And this is also a side distributor. You can see just behind the radiator there that yep. distributor's out there where a guy can actually work on it. Otherwise they were t tucked up in the front and you actually had to pull the distributor if you had to do point work or coils or anything like that. Just sold for $4,700. Reserve was forty five, so we've got a happy seller and a happy buyer. s 140s coming in the ring. A Massey Ferguson 165. Another great looking tractor. Nice paint. Uh, kind of a unique design have not seen a lot of these in the last couple of days no and uh, they're just really starting to get to where they're becoming desirable and uh, some people are wanting to let go of them and they're really starting to get a following as far as the collectors and everything and the more i'm around the more i find out there were a lot of people that really had these tractors when they were farming um, they were ahead of their time with their designs and everything uh, well this tractor looks relatively contemporary it's got the lights in the fender it's got the you know the really 
really nice designed uh, front end and grill. I mean, this is a, this is a really nice looking tractor. Not indicated on the sheet here what year this is. Do you have a, a sense of what mo year model this is? Um, this is probably going to be in the uh, early 60s, early to mid 60s. So, I mean, with their designs and everything, they were they were ahead of their time with because I think they carried this design up into the 70s. They just changed the front ends a little bit, but the hoods and that stayed the same. Has the uh, power adjuster wheels on it. Um, Massey Ferguson always seemed to like having their operator sitting down low, kind of tucked in where all the action is. Yeah. Kind of harkens back to the Ford Ferguson days and the TO30s and the 8Ns and that. They're all about sitting down inside there. Right now we got a bit of $4,100. They have not started to roll yet, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm a novice on what these things are worth. Seems to be a pretty good price for a you know, fully restored, beautiful running uh, Massey 165. Yeah, that's a pretty fair price on it. And I imagine they're probably getting close to that reserve, and that's why they're kind of dragging a little bit here, trying to get a little more out of it. So. You said earlier something about uh, all the, 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 the tractor drivers are part of the tractor club. Um, the reserve has been met, by the way, at 4,300. You're right. They were kind of dragging that last bid to make sure they got to that reserve point. But um, did, did they, uh, do they uh, get paid to do these drivers? Are they doing it out of the love of, uh, love of tractors? Or tell me about these drivers. It, it's a uh, volunteer basis is what it is. And, of course, Dan contributes to the club. Sure. Not, the individuals are not being paid, but they have a scholarship fund for uh, people going to college. Yeah. It's one of the reasons they have a, have a club probably to do things like that. In the agricultural field, they give away a scholarship, and Dan donates to that scholarship fund. So. Kind of a neat Ford in the ring now, a Ford 641 diesel. Again, fully restored, great rubber, uh, neat little tractor right here. Yeah, and of course here this is when they started changing their paint scheme up a little bit. You still got the gray in there, but they kind of went with the red all over and gray wheels now. And uh, these were kind of a transition that's when Ford started getting up into the higher horsepower, but they still kept that low stand that a lot of people like the sta stability and everything that's there. It's, it's, it's familiar looking, but uh, but it is bigger, meatier, different, of course, with the diesel motor too, which uh, the earlier ones didn't have. Right, and then uh, when Ford started going with the Golden Jubilee with that bullet-style nose at the top of the hood, that kind of put Ford in a whole other league with their tractors because they got away from the flathead, they went to the overhead valve, they kind of brought them up to modern times with the rest of the tractors. So tractor is going to have a new owner. $6,500 uh, is the bid. Reserve has been met, and it has been sold. Gavel fell for $6,500 on the Ford Diesel. S4 uh, 143 is coming in the ring now. This is a 1953 John Deere 40. Um, looks unrestored. It looks like it might have had a paint job at one point, but, uh, you know, in otherwise pretty original condition. Yeah, and of course the John Deere 40 took the place of the John Deere Model M that we saw come through a little bit ago with the blade on it. 53 being the first year of production for the 40. Um, I don't have a serial number in front of me. I'd probably be able to pin it down of how early it is for you. But, um, does that make it worth more? A lot of times it does. If it's within the first 10 build or whatever, it'll usually help with the price. It's also got front wheel weights on it, which is a rare option to see on some of these tractors, especially the Deere you didn't see many of them with the front wheel weights. Right now they're about $2,000 on that little tractor. Um, what's going on with the rear wheel? It looks like the, there's the, some waviness to that. Yeah, and what that's for is for setting your different tread widths for cultivating if so you had a wider. you unbold it, move it, yep. and bolt it back up? Mm -hmm. and okay. Like right now it would be pretty well set in a narrow position, but you'd take that off and you could swap it side for side and bolt up on the side that's sticking out now and it would widen your rear wheels yeah, out to where it gets you a little more stability on a side hill. Or well, this, I've just been told, is an absolute sale, so this will have a new owner. And the tractor seems to be running good, so again, uh, kind of a nice entry-level uh, price point at $2,100 for a, you know, a nice vintage 1953 John Deere 40, and they're rolling out. Looks like it, oh, it's got three-point in the yep. back. Yeah, so, I mean, just with the three-point in them front wheel weights, the tires, I mean, you're, you're right where you need to be. $2,100. Yep, it's sold. Industrial.
So here we go with uh, another LI, uh, S-144 is a 1945 John Deere LI. Yeah, and this one comes with an extra engine and hood and gas tank. Has a new battery in it. Has a, hyd has a hydraulic unit on it, too, which was something that you don't see too often with the L's and the LI's. Um, looks like someone put a little front bumper on the front of it. So, now, I th I Didn't the last LI have black hubcaps and this one's got the yellow? Is yeah, that and it, it's it's just uh, whenever it was painted, someone didn't paint the hubcaps black. So you think originally they were black? I believe originally they were black, but um, pretty nice looking little tractor. It's got the wide front axle on it. It appears like it's got the wheel weights on it, which you don't see too often for the L and the LIs, whether those are deer wheel weights or another foundry that was making them for them, but you do not see that too often. This tractor is selling uh, no reserve, $2,600, gone at $2,600, and, and here's a similar looking tractor. This is a 44 John Deere LA. Mm -hmm. And the LA was, if you look, the tubes coming out the back for your frame rails were solid on the LAs, and what it was to beef it up so they could carry the heavier tools and implements, you didn't have the frame breakage. There weren't a lot of them that broke, but when a guy got used them pretty severely, they would wear and crack and break. So. Nice tires on this, uh, decent restoration job no reserve auction twenty two hundred dollars the current bid uh, this is going to a new home really unique looking little tractor does have the factory lights on it too which is another unique option you didn't see many of them with the L or not many of the L and the LA's with the light electric start um, tires are nice on it I mean just be a nice little tractor the nice part about those is if you got an eight foot bed on your pickup you can run that into the bed of the pickup it'll fit right in the back of it $2,900 at the current bid, and it's sold. It's going to a new owner. That's a 1944 John Deere. Coming in now is a 1960 Case 930 Wheatland. Uh, looks to be in really nice, reconditioned uh, shape. Uh, running yeah. good. Uh, it's got the, uh, are those rubber mud flap kind of things on the back of those? It looks like someone's done a little, uh, little customization there. But, um, of course, the Wheatland, you set the whole tractor sets a little bit lower. You got the big fenders. And the Case, of course, has those two big built-in headlights in the front that kind of give it a unique look. Yeah, and actually, I, I've been around a 1030 case row crop, and just a nice tractor. But the one I was on was what they called a Comfort King, which was an option that set you up higher. You had a cushy seat and everything, and, I mean, it was like sitting in an office. I mean, you had this big, wide platform, and one of the first tractors I ever ran that had a foot throttle on it. Really? So, so does the 930 have that as well, you think? I, that one may not because I'm not seeing that designated as a Comfort King. King, but uh, I, if you notice, just the length and the depth of these engines, they were real long stroke. Massive. Mm -hmm. yeah. They ran at low RPM, so they ran forever. You couldn't hardly wear them out. Yeah. Well, it looks to be a good buy right now at $2,200. No indication whether or not it's selling, but uh, again, for a restored, uh, running, good tractor, some really nice price points today. So for some folks that, uh, that want to get into the, the tractor collecting or, or add to their current collection. Now it's jumped up to 3250 Again, still a really good buy if they decide to take it. And she's now rolling out of the arena. It's got hydraulics on it as well, it looks like. And looks as like you two, mentioned, those two uh, remotes. Yeah, those nice uh, nice mud flaps somebody put on there. So 3750 as it rolls out of the ring. This is S146, and the bid goes on. Not quite enough for the seller on that one. Uh, we're in the final day, by the way, and, and probably the final quarter of the uh, Gone Farm and Vintage Tractor Auction uh, here in Walworth, Wisconsin, uh, run by the, by the Meekham family. We'll talk more about some upcoming events in a moment, but uh, here's another pretty neat little tractor, a 1950 Ferguson. It's a TO-20. Yeah, the TO-20, if you look at it, a lot of similarities to the Ford a yeah. um, Of course, this one painted red. We've had one come through earlier that was a, a grayish-white color. So it was just kind of a, a lot of them got painted whatever the farmer felt fit when he decided it was time to slap a new coat of paint. Or maybe 
whatever paint he had in the yeah. in the barn. You know, yeah, you never there, know. There might have been a few of them that were painted barn red. Yep. So. <laughs> um, but a uh, nice little tractor here. Um, well, this is a, even if you you know you kind of like those Ford tractors, this is one that uh, is real similar to that in looks and uh, probably uh, drivetrain. Twelve hundred dollars a current bid. Not no indication whether or not it's selling. I can't imagine a tractor, uh, you know, really in this kind of condition uh, is going to sell for that. But you never know. And this one's actually, uh, I believe, selling at no reserve, but I'm not sure. Well, if that's the case, I might just have to run out there and buy this one. This one would uh, look good back at the, at the acreage. Neat little tractor. Good tires. Three point. He even has a draw bar in the frame, which is something you don't see too often on the Fords and the Fergusons. That little tractor sold for $1,500. What uh, somebody just made, I think, a pretty good buy on that little unit. 1940 Farmall M is making its way into the ring now, the number S148. Yeah, and this one here, 1940 Farmall M, second year of production. Originally came on steel wheels because it's got the spokes and they've been cut down. And it has a Schwartz wide front, but those are the correct wheels for a 39 or a 40. You notice the opening in them yeah. is a lot bigger and the hubs a little bit bigger than what you see on the later production ones. Um, real neat tractor um, to see one with the with those cut down spokes on the rear, and someone has put the wheel weights on too. Done it so, right. um, nice restoration paint on this thing. It really is a nice tractor. Tires all the way around. I kind of like them with that four rib design when they're on a uh, wide front like that. Yeah, I I think that's a great tractor. And again, wow, I think that uh, that looks like a, in bargain land, as uh, as my co-host Max would say. 1750 again. We can't imagine the reserve being met at that figure, but we'll have to see. The bid goes on. It's at 1750. And here we go, the little dual wheel rear. This is a neat little tractor I looked at earlier in uh, uh, S148.1, uh, a little Farmall Cub. It's got, uh, the dual rear wheels have to be kind of rare on this tractor. Yeah, and uh, I think this is something that someone has kind of put together. I'm not sure if this is a factory Cub setup. It may be. It may have been some specialty thing that IH did for a certain buyer or user, but I think this this is something that was kind of thrown Customized together. Customized a little bit. Mm -hmm. Offset rear seat. Kind of a, a unique, again, this would be a neat, uh, neat little uh, unique tractor or uh, parade vehicle for uh, uh, for somebody to take through with the kids. And it looks like it's selling. Uh, the little sticker was attached by our little ring steward. And uh, $2,100 looks like that thing might be going home somewhere. And it is sold. 149 Silver King. Coming into the ring now, uh, being towed in is S149, a Silver King. Uh, it's it's kind of got that unique uh, uh, single rear we or single front tire sticking out front. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't see, haven't seen too many of these at the auction. No, I believe this is our second one today, but we usually don't see many of them. Um, the people that have them usually don't like getting rid of them because they are a unique tractor. Um, that silver paint and the red wheels, and then some of them, some people go as far as it cast piece that's over top of the wheel running back to the grill that, that's got lines on it. They'll sit there and highlight all that. And, and they make for a real nice looking tractor when it's all done. But uh, you don't see many of them. Well, and this one's being, we don't know what's wrong with the motor, which is probably uh, indicative of what the price is doing right now. But body seems to be in pretty good shape. And again, a pretty unique tractor just sold to somebody for $1,350. Uh, another 60 coming in now, a 1955 John Deere 60, number S150. Got the wide front end. It's got the three-point, uh, knee-deep in rubber. Uh, Nice-looking tractor here. And this is another one I've had my hands in. This is actually a friend of mine's tractor from down here in Harvard. Um, I had to give him a hand. Need a little tweak in getting it straightened out to bring it up here to sell. He's actually got two of them, and he decided he didn't need the one with the wide front. Yeah. So he was asked me about getting it on the auction up here, and I told him, well, come up and talk to Dan or Paul, and they're more than happy to take another tractor and see if what we can bring for you. So. Well, I hope he gets what he wants. It looks like a nice restoration. Did he do the restoration himself? No, he had bought it done. He just went through and cleaned her up here recently to bring it up here. Uh, fender, fenders on it, three-point 
Next the wide front. Well, it's, it's sold for $4,500, so uh, he got his money out of it. So again, a good, good, uh, good opportunity there for a seller and a buyer. In, in the ring now is a 1941 John Deere H, number S151. Narrow front end. It's got the mag wheels on the front, solid on the rear. Uh, Looks like, looks like a nicely restored tractor. Yeah, and the front wheels on this are actually they're cast iron all the way through. Right where wow. the beads sit and everything. They use that up, I think up until 42 or 43. Then they came with the uh, bold on front steel rims. Um, the neat part about this is you see how small the flywheel is on this tractor. Yeah. And now you come across this side, you can see it. That belt pulley sits higher up than on most of the John Deere's, the A's, the B's, 60's, all of them. That crankshaft comes all the way through to the clutch. Yeah. On these here, the belt pulley turns the opposite direction because it's running off the end of the camshaft. And this and is the only model that does that. Yep, this is the only model that does that. And of course, these were built from 39 to 46. $1,800. Somebody's a new owner of that one. Again, I, you couldn't uh, do the paint and tires for that. Uh, I'd say that uh, that was a good bargain. Uh, S152, uh, no reserve tractor that uh, looks to be in pretty original condition. Uh, it's a Massey Harris Pony. Actually, I believe we're on 153. We just passed 152. I don't think that one showed up. So this is actually a uh, 1935. Well, that's a John Deere, isn't it? Yeah, I was going to say. I, I look at the color now. You can see the green coming through. And of course, 35 being the second year of production. Yeah. Um, yeah, this one here it looks like it's pretty close to original, or yeah. at least uh, it's got the barn desirable fresh. wheels on it. Yeah, the, well, the rears, it appears that those are cut off. Are those the flat cut? Yeah, And the flat front cut. ones are the round. Yeah, and a lot of those could be cut off, too, on the front. And the only way to really tell is whether that's been embossed and opened up. Um, those were actually, the spokes were riveted to the steel rim. So. It looks like we're still kind of out of whack. I'm sure that that $1,400 bid is for this tractor. But. Uh, I believe it is, uh, Oliver, 70, which wasn't a bad price for running 35A. So now this is, is probably S134, which is the 47 Oliver. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, Oliver 70 row crop with the wide front, which it was a different option for the 70s. You don't see many of them. A lot of the 70s um, we saw yesterday with some of, some of the tractors that came through were narrow fronts with the wide front makes it a little more desirable and of course you can see that with the reflection in the price of 2500 I believe we're bid right now. Yeah that's, uh, that's got some great lines of course again Oliver uh, has the closed engine case as one of their trademarks and that's uh, got the vented sides nicely restored with all the decals and, and, uh, and, and pinstripes. Nice looking rig. Yeah and of course that's six cylinder gas in there um, and smooth you get them where they're idled down and they're running right they are just as smooth and quiet I've, I've had some of them where you actually got to walk up and put your hand on the side of them to find if it's running, if it's running. No kidding. Uh, Oliver's always got such great lines uh, almost an elegant tractor if I, can, if I can use that word but that 47 uh, just sold no, actually, just was it oh, was the bid, bid continued on that one All right. next one is a 1955 John Deere 50 looks like she's got a little spreader behind her too the spreader has not had quite the restoration that the tractor has. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying that for us, Paul. Ladies and gentlemen, offer you just the No, and I think that spreader is one of the lots that we kind of passed up here a little bit ago. And the 50 clean, very straight power steering being sold in loving memory from the Bill L. Salvage Savage Collection. Um, real nice looking tractor, new tires all the way around. Um, looks like uh, they've been using it for some belt work because you can see on the belt pulley there, it's all cleaned off yeah, like a it's been scuffed up with a flat belt. Yep. Um, Which was, of course, one of the great purposes, multi-purpose functions of these things. They could run a lot of different equipment. Well, and the nice part with John Deere, of course, this is one of their selling points about their two-cylinder engine design was less moving parts. You could change a clutch in 15 to 20 minutes with common hand tools, no split in the tractor. You just pulled that cover off and popped the clutch plates out. And Pretty simple. So 
So S-155 now is at 22.50. Not sure. It does not say whether or not the spreader is being sold with this. So I think most likely this is just the tractor. Well, here we are at the Gone Farm and Vintage Tractor Auction. Don't go anywhere. There is a whole bunch more to come. A lot of history and a lot of good deals and uh, uh, a lot of vintage tractors are going to be sold yet today. So we're going to take a short break. And Max Wilson, Patrick Holmes, will be right back after this short break. Do you have a classic tractor or collection you'd like featured on our weekly show? Well, time is running out for Meekum's Gone Farming Vintage Classic Tractor Auction, coming up November 1st and 2nd in Davenport, Iowa. It all happens at the Mississippi Valley Fairgrounds, where we'll feature hundreds of the best vintage tractors anywhere. Just call or log on to Meekum.com to find out all the entry details. And we'll see you November 1st and 2nd in Davenport, Iowa. I'm here now with Gary Holland, who has been bidding today, as I understand. Did you actually end up purchasing anything? Uh, two tractors, a couple bikes, and some smaller signs. Excellent, excellent. What brought you here today? I've got two tractors that will sell tomorrow. Oh, okay. What type of tractors are you selling with us? Uh, John Deere 4240 High Crop. Perfect. Have you ever been to one of these auctions before? Yeah, I sold 18 tractors here last year. Wow, that's a lot of tractors. Do you do you have a collection that you keep at home that's kind of your personal collection? Well, I did have. I sold most of them. I'm down to about two now. Excellent, excellent. And so you, you bought a couple more, though, today? Yeah, I bought a John Deere 730. Thank you so much for taking the time out to talk to us, and I, I hope you uh, do well tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Whether you're a collector or just an enthusiast, Meekum has a vehicle for you. You can go to Meekum.com to see not only the antique tractor shows coming up, but also the classic automobiles as well. So be sure to tune in every Tuesday at 530 right here on RFD-TV for Meekum's Gone Farming Antique Tractor Show. Max Wilson, Pat Combs, we'll see you next week.